on this week's episode of Marketing O'Clock. I never met a verification program I didn't like. Take your responsive display ads to new heights. Google now accepts vertical 9 by 16 images. Susan Wojcicki, we bid you adieu as we kneel to our new YouTube overlord. <laughs> it's going to be a <laughs> show. Welcome, you are listening to Welcome. Marketing O'Clock. Just stay tuned. Digital marketing news, but let's get specific. Digital ads, SEO, and analytics. Social media and more. Yeah. Pretty much everything that'll make your website perform. With new shows every Friday. Every Friday. We'll give you the news with sass and puns and definitely high takes. Thank you for tuning in. You know what time it is It's officially marketing o'clock Settle in, sit back, keep it locked Hey there, I'm Nicole Waddington A.K.A. Not Shep I'm Jess Bud And I'm Greg Finn And it is officially marketing o'clock Here on February 24th, 2023 All right, and Shep and I recorded a marketing talk a few weeks ago, or a few days ago, a few days sorry, ago, a few days yeah. ago, not weeks ago, and her voice was waning at the time. It has gone to nothing. So thank you, Nicole, for stepping in last mm-hmm. minute here and making it so we don't have nails on the chalkboard with her half voice that she's got going on. We can't wait to have you back next week, Shep. Slash giving the poor girl a break, though. All right. And then Tables has housekeeping. Are you doing the housekeeping here? He wants me to do it, so I'll do it. Um, But it is an important fact that Tables brought to our attention. Apparently, 96% of y'all have not subscribed to our YouTube channel. We love that you are listening and watching, but we want you to just smash that subscribe button or whatever the kids say and or leave a comment or any questions you have you want to talk to us. Get engaged, please. Maybe to each other if you love each other, but engage with us. We love that. Yes, it actually helps a lot. It really does. really appreciate it. All right. And I, yesterday, was making the prep notes. If you notice, the prep notes came very late yesterday. Mm -hmm. Always good. I fired the TV up. Thank you. You're welcome. Later than usual, all right? We'll put it back. (laughs) Fired the TV up. Amazon Prime recommended a movie that I'm like, I can do prep notes to this. This is going to stink. It was so epically engaging that I had to wait for the prep notes to be done at the end of it. A little movie film? called Jurassic World Dominion. Ever seen it? Is that the one? Which one is that? I don't know. It's, tw- it's a 2022. Is there a little girl in the beginning? There's. It starts with a boat scene. I love a boat scene at the beginning of things. I'm like, oh, I'm all in. This is going to be great. And then it got so progressively bad. They... It was just so unbelievable that I couldn't wrap my head around it. And the thing is, like... A few moments later... A plane could land on ice, but then a human will break it, but a dinosaur wouldn't. 20 minutes later... It was so stupid, and I just... The thing that really got me, I was hooked from the beginning. The introduction to this movie was like a Neo Mohan short. <laughs> uh. They put so much information into the intro to this movie. My Did head was going to in? explode. Watch watch the intro to this movie. I They're have. Like, <laughs> and I think we need to have a Jurassic World Dominion like watch club here. So if you get it, I'll make pins or something and say I survived Dominion. We'll get a little pin out there. I do like that. All right. So that's it. Nicole, <laughs> highly recommend. Two thumbs up. What do you got? Okay. So I am on a detox. Oh, my Okay. Gosh. You're so new age. (laughs) (laughs) Nobody's ever done this before. Um, I don't, I'm not Catholic. I don't, I'm not religious really. But today when we're recording is the first day of Lent. So I figured perfect time to set intentions for what I'm going to give up for the next 40 days. Um, Energy drinks, all social media. Wow. Wow. Deleted everything from my phone. Not for work, though. You're still going to run you, the How ads? are you going to run LinkedIn ads? Yeah. That doesn't count, right? Well, on my desktop. I can go oh, on the okay. desktop. Okay. Yeah. But on no my phone, use. everything's deleted, right? But yesterday, I was trying to check the hours for a business, and they post it on their Instagram story. So now I'm on my phone, and I'm trying to see, okay, do they open at five or six? You know, what are the hours, right? You have to call them up. <sighs> I, I'm too young for that. I don't use the phone. <laughs> <laughs> well, then you say 
hi, are you open? You answered the phone. Thank you. Bye. Like, it's very awkward. Very awkward. So I'm running into some difficulties day one, but we'll get through these next week. Yeah, you guys be real hard on those notes because half of them are from Twitter, for the record. Yeah. She's on her desk. Just what are you giving up this Lent? Um, probably my child if CPS is listening. So I've told you before about the murderous things that he said or like weird things. He's just, he's my son. So we're playing the other day. He's in the tub. (laughs) He's in the tub and we have these little like Playmobil dudes and we're playing whatever on the side. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to jump in the water. Like we're at a store. He invented a store that sells candles and turkey and chicken and all the essentials. Right. And I'm like, okay, well I'm slipping and I'm going to fall in the water. And his reply is, don't fall in the water. It's electric. Wow. So I dropped my person in the water and he laughed. <laughs> I wonder why he's demonic. <laughs> so things are fine at the Bud household. What's happened in the news this week, Nicole? Dario Zanoni noticed that Google ads is now allowing vertical 9 by 16 images for the responsive display ads and he linked the help page um, and it's been updated to include specifications for this image size very cool Mm -hmm. all right and hopefully it makes those the rdas on mobile better because i feel like that's always a weak spot Mm -hmm. i just hate making those vertical ones because you have to be so much different than the horizontal side and if you're showing product or anything it's so tough All right, next up, Google's 16th employee, Susan Wojcicki, is leaving the company. She is most famously, I think, known for being the person that rented out her garage to Sergey and Larry, who went on to found Google and said garage. But Susan was also a huge influence on Google and Alphabet through the years. Susan helped to spearhead Google Doodles, co-developed Google Images, was the first project manager of AdSense, oversaw all analytics and ad products, including AdWords, AdSense, AdWords, AdSense, DoubleClick, and Google Analytics. She recommended the $1.65 billion purchase of YouTube and the $3.1 billion purchase, purchase of DoubleClick. And she was the CEO of YouTube since Jan, uh, February 2014. So a very nice run. Arguably, her best moment was at YouTube during the... February 10th, 2022, one minute and one second short calls five innovations coming to YouTube in 2022. Hashtag short starring Neil Mohan, where he ran through the seven new updates coming to YouTube, many of which still have not come here in 2023, including NFTs. Susan says, the time is right for me. I feel able to do this because we have an incredible leadership team at place in YouTube. When I joined YouTube nine years ago, one of my first priorities was bringing in an incredible leadership team. Neil Mohan was one of those leaders, and he'll be the SVP and new head of YouTube. So we have her replacement, Neil. She goes on to talk about Neil, saying he became YouTube's chief product officer in 2015. Since then, he has set up a top-notch product and UX team to play pivotal roles in the launch of some of our biggest products, including YouTube TV, YouTube Music, and Premium, and Shorts, and has led our trust and safety team. And that's all gone swimmingly. So, <laughs> so what's next for Susan, you might be asking? I was. This is where she starts to bullshit a little bit. Mm. She says, as for me, in the short term, I plan to support Neil and help with the transition, which will include continuing to work with some YouTube teams, coaching team members, and meeting with creators. In the longer term, I've agreed with Sundar to take on an advisory role across Google and Alphabet. This will allow me to call on my different experiences, yada, yada, yada. It is an incredibly important time for Google. It reminds me of the early days. Incredible product and technology innovation, huge opportunities, and a healthy disregard for the impossible. That's the first time somebody's ever said that about Google in the past four years. And it's not. She kind of has some loyalty. She's got a... There's literally no innovation. You're stealing TikTok and you're stealing Reels. You're not innovating in the least bit. I think there's a lot of healthy disregard. Oh, yeah. Perhaps not for the impossible, just for humans. Yeah, for what the users want. Mm -hmm. I agree. We wish you the best, Susan, and we really look forward to how Neil is going to break this platform in the near future. We are always reading tweets. I'm going to read a Facebook status from none other than the Zuck himself on February 19th at 10.51 a.m. local time. 
Good morning and new product announcement. <laughs> starting off great. This week, we're starting to roll out MetaVerified, a subscription service that lets you verify your account with a government ID, get a blue badge, innovative, get extra impersonation <laughs> protection against accounts claiming to be you, and get direct access to customer support. This new feature is about increasing authenticity and security across our services. MetaVerified starts at $11.99 a month on web or $14.99 a month on iOS. We'll be rolling out in Australia and New Zealand this week and more countries soon. So he didn't specify the currency there, but I guess maybe that's a little bit fuzzy. So are a lot of things. I will say the name is probably a direct attack on the bird, but that's a digression. This whole thing, blue, I know Facebook's color is blue, but that like, just get out of here. There has been some interesting discussion in the comments underneath this. Somebody said direct access to customer support is the real value, much more so than the blue check mark. I agree. So does Mark Zuckerberg. He said it's a big part of the value. Yes, he's acknowledging that. Somebody else said this really should just be part of the core product. The user should not have to pay for this. I, their support in general should just be better. You shouldn't have to pay for good support. And somebody later down in the comments said currently there's zero customer support. So yeah, I could see you know people that are maybe higher profile or spending a lot of money or something, you know, paying for dedicated support, but nobody's getting any support. So this kind of seems like gatekeeping and I don't like it. A lot of people had a lot of things to say and you can read it at your leisure if you're really bored, but I didn't see any chatter about why. Like, there's really nothing there. I don't know if they're losing ad revenue because of the heck show that it has been or if it's just another way to make money. Is it going to pave the way for less ads if people, more people sign up for this? I don't really know, but I feel like that's probably an implication that could be huge and <clears throat> remains to be seen. I don't know if you guys have any thoughts on this. It just seems, obviously it feels very Twitter, but we can move beyond that and just think about what it means for Meta. And I don't really know what it means. Like my dad's not going to pay for that. I don't know how many people, how many users are going to pay for this. Politicians maybe? There's, I don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, there, there's a select, group of people that need this and will gladly pay for it. If you're on Instagram, there are so many fake accounts, people mm -hmm. stealing things, especially like if you have an account, I've seen many people like lose access to their account and things like that. That's all the posters. Twitter comments are about mm -hmm. every time there's an announcement. <clears throat> yeah. Right. So I get, I get that aspect of it. And if you, it is anything to do with like, I guess your business, this makes sense. If you're an influencer and it's impacting your business, this is a nice step up. But that's probably five percent of people. Yeah, and what about actual like pages? This doesn't mention pages. This sounds like it's personal accounts. Which again, if you're a creator, that makes sense. Maybe someday businesses could pay for elevated support alone. I don't know. I it'll be really interesting to see how this shakes out. I, I don't know. They'd be printing money if they offered that, though. <laughs> they would. They they would. They would have to print people though. There's not enough customer support representatives in the yeah. world to fix the issues we're all having. Yeah. So there's that. Um. I, I guess my, my thought is Elon seemed to have done this on Twitter because it was failing so badly and their ad platform was such trash that there was no way to try to make profit on this. And I feel like the fact that Facebook and Instagram, aka uh, Meta, are doing this is not a good sign. I mean, their platform is trash too, mm -hmm. their ad platform. It's just it's getting <clears throat> shittier and shittier. They're more difficult to use. It's going the way of the Google. And I, maybe I'm, maybe it's me. I get on like Facebook now. Instagram seems to have gotten better recently from just trying to push stuff that you don't care about. Mm -hmm. Facebook is unusable at this I point. Don't you log in, and it's, mm -hmm. it just, I just get football stories about people I don't care about, and I just log out, and there's no way to get rid of it, and I just don't use that app anymore. Nicole's not using it for 40 days. Yeah. At least. Or more. Or more. I feel like, I don't know. It, mm -hmm. I will leave you with this because there was an amazing comment and we like to keep things light here. Uh, Rob Den Bleeker said, From enough is cyanide enough. and happiness. That's the name of his cartoon. Oh. Oh, that's who this is? Yeah. Fantastic. Okay. <laughs> that's why they already have a check mark. That's something else here that I didn't even think mm -hmm. about until this moment. So we'll dig into that. But uh, Rob says, enough is enough. I'm going to Twitter where a JPEG of a blue check mark only costs $8. <laughs> <laughs> Three dollar savings. <laughs> Such a deal. Now it's time for this week's take of the week. This is a hashtag fire digital marketing take with extra spice served up for you. We simply deliver the take for your consumption. We give no opinions. We don't influence. You make the call.
This week's Take of the Week comes from Colin Slattery over at TycoonDigital.com. And actually, Jess, yes. as the 2022 most pro Google marketer of the year, I don't know if I can read this one. Would you like me I'd to? Offer, no, you know what? I'll, I'll do it. I don't want to do it. Just for the record, I don't want to do it. But I'm going to do it. So it's this called, is a quote. This isn't Greg's opinion, right? This is not my opinion. Okay. This is Colin's opinion. And Colin says, Google is robbing you and you can't stop them, is the name of the article. He goes in to say that you're advertising on Google and they're reaching their hand into your pocket and jamming money into theirs. And goes on to say that you can increase the quality of the ad and the expected return for the ad, which can result in advertisers bidding more. That's one way Google can make money. Or you can take inventory that has minimal interest from advertisers and force more advertisers to bid for it thus raising the price and goes on to talk about how items like performance max are doing the latter of not working on quality and instead trying to put people into different um, poor performing inventory he makes three different levels three different tiers of google's inventory the first tier that colin has is the premium search tier it's the good stuff he says the stuff everybody bids on high cost high value high competition then he's got mid-tier inventory that's youtube tier one gmail tier two search um, and it's got average cost average value and average competition and then he's got the google has to sell this somehow the trash tier <laughs> and the trash tier is all display tier two youtube tier two gmail tier three search and it's got low cost zero value and zero competition he goes on to have a good example of talking about some of those app placement ads the placements mm. that you could have in apps and how it's even harder than it ever was to remove all that and it talks about how google is promoting more of this trash tier and he says this type of monopolistic behavior is nothing new we have food safety laws in the u.s because food manufacturers were increasing their profits by quite literally bulking up the weight of sausage by putting sawdust in it i hate when they do that you were eating sausage today it was sausage it was fake meat they replaced the a with an apostrophe and i'm not sure how to pronounce bless that. you <laughs> <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> All right. He says, if we look back on the seven last seven years of ad platform changes through the lens of Google, boosting profit by forcing advertisers to buy garbage, a.k.a. f***ing you. Sorry, Shep. Every change that they've made makes sense. Ever broadening of match types. Um, move, then he talks about moving uh, to have people negate more. Then he says about you can't see where ads are showing and then the cpcs of the hidden searches that are shown in the search query report are increasing at a faster rate than the visible searches and he says that it makes sense when you realize google had search queries in order to make people buy garbage that they would otherwise exclude and he goes on to finish up by saying google's ultimate goal is to have their advertising system evolve into a flat tax on businesses Every business has a minimum acceptable return. That is the lowest return on their ad dollar where they will keep advertising. All returns in excess of this minimum acceptable return are viewed as a bug in the system by Google. Those are dollars that could otherwise go to Google and they are working the hardest to ensure that those dollars do in fact go into their pockets instead of the advertisers. And I would never comment on if this is a good article or a bad article, but it is a fantastic article, Colin. You hit the nail on the head, and it really pains me to say this. It's 2023. You can change it's your It's 2023. Opinion. I probably lost my award here in 2023. Go check it out. Tycoon Digital. T-A-I-K-U-N digital.com. Thank you, Colin. Now it's time for this week's I See Why Am I. I See Why Am I, people. This is something you just might not have seen. Maybe something that you overlooked, but you shouldn't have. This week's I See Why Am I is from Kirk Williams, aka PPC Kirk. He had a post on LinkedIn flagging the use of um, Universal Analytics imported goals as conversions in Google Ads accounts. So he was saying that if you want to get ahead of the curve when GA goes away, you should be switching over to the Google tag ASAP. Um, so you have time to troubleshoot any potential code issues, gather your data, um, 
and you can keep it on secondary conversions before switching it over to primary. That's a good tip. I thought that was a really good call out. Um, I always like setting things up on G- in GTM anyway, but if you do have Google Ads accounts going off of UA conversions, might want to get this set up. Now it's time for this week's pew pew lightning round. At this point in the show, we split up our content into three parts, paid, organic, and social. This week's lightning round is brought to you by Serps Up, an SEO podcast by Wix with Crystal and Morty. This is your go-to SEO podcast. It has timely information each week, but my favorite part is these episodes are evergreen. They go through, like we talked about a few weeks ago, and will give you anything and everything that you need to know about redirects. Just find that and bookmark it. But... It doesn't end there. Episode 25, a must listen. One of our BFFs, Anu Agnambola from PPC Live and the PPC Chat Roundup podcast jumps on with Morty and Crystal and talks about moving your landing pages beyond PPC. Mm. Anything Anu is a must listen. And I like the fact of how creative they get with SEO. A lot of times it's bland. Even their most recent episode, 26, with Daniel Chung, says, is it the chase for head terms doomed to fail? So they really dive in and do not only tactical things like the redirects we talked about before, but also dive in to hot topics and really expand beyond just talking about technical SEO. So don't miss the Serps Up podcast. Tune in anywhere you consume podcasts. Where you're listening to this now, go check it out and you can see everything. The Wix SEO Learning Hub, the podcast, all the previous episodes, wix.com forward slash SEO forward slash learn forward slash podcast. Thank you, Serps Up and thank you, Wix. First up in paid news this week, Twitter announces that they will now allow ads for cannabis companies. So previously they did not allow any cannabis advertising on their platform, but they now are going to allow it in states where it is legal while following federal regulations. So these ads must not sell or promote cannabis products with the exception of topical or non-ingestible hemp derived CBD items that comply with the government's um, 0.3% THC threshold. Um, And then another requirement is that it has to be a licensed cannabis advertiser who has been pre-approved by Twitter. You are only allowed to target geographical areas within the US where they are authorized to promote cannabis products or services online. And in addition, you cannot target users under age um, and must comply with all applicable laws and regulations, so. Good opportunity if you're, yeah, if you're a cannabis company. I just like that they put all this information out there and they give you clarity. They're mm-hmm. just doing a good job of setting the bar high. That joke went up in small. I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that time you thought Cheech and Chong were dead? And they I bet were, you $100 right? and they're both alive. Did I pay you? You did. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Christina over on our uh, Marketing O'Clock Discord, community.marketingclock.com. Notice that Meta is putting recommendations in the campaign view. So it looks like you can hover over um, some of the charts and it gets um, it gives suggestions and links where you can make those changes. Um, I wasn't able to replicate this in any of my accounts. So if you are seeing this, it might be helpful, might not be, but still can't find anything in the platform. So this is just one of those things you can't find. (laughs) Love might be dead on Meta too because Say that again. it's dead everywhere. <laughs> Sorry, honey, I love you. <laughs> so Rock Haldnick spotted that Meta might be turning off ad sets because it contained um, detailed targeting options that have been discontinued in his campaign. So he included a screenshot of the ad warning or ad set warning that had been turned off. And it looks like this campaign specifically was trying to target people who had dating, love, or romance interests. No, no. <laughs> this is if so you look at it, sad. 
Yes. You, love is still turned love, on. You just can't be oh, romantic. Yes. Love you can advertise on. Love isn't canceled. Love yeah. isn't canceled. Romance. Dating and romance. Yeah. But parentheses, <laughs> romance, love. love. <laughs> what do you have to be doing that Facebook thinks you're interested in love? Self love? I don't know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So. I don't know. I, I'm just really curious what this campaign was for. But um, yeah, make sure you're checking your uh, ad sets to make sure you're still targeting eligible demographics. And next up from Lawrence Chassis at Al Chassis on Twitter. He says, PSA, if you have any brands using FTP, which is file transfer protocol in Merchant Center, it will be going away on September 15th, 2023. And he links out to the Google support article um, announcing this. Thanks for the flag, Lawrence. Yep, and And you can still use secure FTP or SFTP. All right, Anthony Higman at Anthony Higman on Twitter Notice that in one of his accounts, he got a good to know about a quality score, but when he clicked into the reason, it said that the keyword is not triggering ads to appear on Google right now due to low ad rank. Ads are ranked based on your bid and quality score. So there's just a lot of confusion right now. What is it? Is it bid or is it quality score? Is it ad rank? What is considered what matters here? And it used to be like ad rank was quality score times your bid, which is sort of what this reason that he got was showing. And and they could just do so much better job on the messaging of it all. Mm-hmm. The message he got is quality score is not a key performance indicator and should not be optimized or aggregated with the rest of your data. It's not an input in the ad auction. But then the reason he got is exactly an input mm-hmm. in the auction. Yeah, it's the opposite. So yeah. in reality, the quality score is, is sort of like, does the landing page match the keyword, mm-hmm. which matches the ad, but it isn't actually going into the auction, but you can look at it and try to get an a, assessment mm-hmm. of things. But just don't look at the reason that he put up there because that part is wrong. Does yeah. that make any sense? I had, no. to, I had to reread this like four different times to understand it. And then a lot of people were replying to this thread, including Ginny Marvin, who reiterated that Nothing has changed about the way that Google treats quality score and rank, but it's still nevertheless confusing. Seems like they changed the way they communicate about it, though, mm-hmm. which is a problem. Yeah. And then Gil Gilner had a reply to this thread, too, <laughs> and said, PPC is becoming more like SEO, and I hate it. Sorry, Gil. <laughs> That's really bleak. <laughs> Malia Fowler on LinkedIn had a post about poor Google ad support, where she wasn't blaming the reps themselves, but blaming the system. And one of the lines in this post what, that stood out was, where else do you spend thousands of dollars and get this type of limited support? Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> I actually spit. I don't know if you can find that on camera, Dale. And I think actually- I actually spit on my computer. Actually, somebody said that in one of the comments What's that it? they could they could think of they could think of another platform. But I think the overall message of this this post hits the nail on the head that you know these these reps are incentivized mm-hmm. and you know it's not necessarily their fault. It's they're doing their job, but the system is broken. Um, and you know she finishes out the post saying, you know, I know better, so I can push back. But I feel for the people who don't and can't. Another one from Gil Gildner at Gil Gildner on Twitter. He had a post about Google Ads AI suggesting headlines for his RSAs that are over the character limit of 30. (laughs) And so he put a screenshot in. It looks like the headline um, suggestions were externship opportunities, remote externships, Um, which seem to be over the character limit. Externship for college students sure is. Yeah. So Google ads, AI, what are you doing? That should be like number one, character count. Yeah. Stay within this character count. It's so easy. I don't know how to code a thing, and that's where I'd start. Character cannot go over 30. Mm -hmm. Human brains have been doing that for years, begrudgingly so, but an article from Barry Schwartz over on Search Engine Roundtable. He 
had an excellent article summarizing the mass disapprovals and suspensions that people were seeing lately in their Google Ads campaigns. And I must start this (laughs) with a line from his article, second paragraph, first line. He writes, Google Ads and chart expert Greg Finn, who I trust fully, <laughs> and then follows with a reference to one of your tweets. I don't know Tuesday. about the, the Google Ads stuff, but tr- he got the charts the right. Chart Thank you, expert. Barry. You need to put that on your business card. I I'm gonna make business cards that say yeah. Google Ads and chart expert Greg <laughs> Finn. Could you imagine fully that trusted by Barry, yeah, Barry Schwartz? Schwartz. Yeah. Yes, we're Doing gonna it. get so many clients from that. I'm making that a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> but to get into the article, a lot of people have been talking about these suspensions on Twitter and tagging Ginny and Google Ads forums. And most of the re- reasons that are being cited are for circumventing systems, suspicious payments, or misrepresentation. And as of Wednesday afternoon, we still haven't had a response from Google Ads about what's going on. And it's across all verticals. And some of the circumventing policies might have been from an anti-click fraud software that people were including. I saw some people fix the payments problem by updating their payment information. It's a mess. It's a mess out there. And their the support, I know a lot of people were unfortunately laid off at Google. Mm-hmm. Half of the team that responds to things is they don't update anything anymore and they don't, everything is just, you know, hey, have we tried value based bidding? Broad matches now. Performance max. <laughs> Over on LinkedIn, Colin Slattery had a post and he was saying, Stop running tests for periods of time. It's useless. Your test should be run against an amount of data and based on what you're testing and the confidence you're looking for with the result. How long it takes to get there is irrelevant. Colin Slattery is on fire today. Yeah. He can't miss, Colin, can't miss. Whenever anybody asks, it's like, mm-hmm. I, if your budget is is 150000 a week and you are you have a ton of traffic on that, like you can do that. If you have low volume, you cannot make a statistical, like a, with good correlation mm-hmm. on any of those numbers. So it's not a time period. It's about what those, the actual, your sample size is. Smart. Andrew Lulk. Over on Twitter, had a tweet that said, at Ginny Marvin, why do we have to deal with Google Ads reps like this? And he goes on to describe an event where a rep forgot to remove him from CC before he emailed his client that they weren't doing a good job. Oh, no. And Andrew Locals on to say, I've written him multiple times very kindly, informing him that his services aren't needed. And then Andrew includes a screenshot of the email. And the first line in the email is, I'm not sure what you're doing with the agency, but your account is behind in regards to GA4 migration. And then goes on to include some action items that the client should take. You're also missing basic components in the account, such as running RSAs with poor ad strength, Let's make sure we're putting the customer first here. Uh, this is why we drink. I don't know unbelievable. It, it is so inappropriate that you're going around the agency, and especially on something that literally in February has nothing to do with the performance of your account. Andrew Lulk is a fantastic, phenomenal marketer over at Savvy Revenue, and he is taking all of his time to put it in, to get the numbers that the client needs in Q1. Is he behind the scenes making sure? Do I think for one second that Andrew come June 1st isn't going to have conversion set up the proper way and have that data? Absolutely not. I bet my life on it. Andrew knows what he's doing. The fact that you're doing this and then talking about RSAs with a poor ad strength and you're the one that's not giving any insight into ad strength and there's no number and you can't see exactly what's happening. You're the problem, Google. And you've got GA4 that is a piece of to use and he's probably trying to pull reports and it's so much faster with GA3 and you can still do it. You've got time and you don't need to do all that now. It's just unbelievably inappropriate, this whole thing. Yeah. 
And you know what? How this rep is getting paid? Probably, hey, what percentage mm -hmm. of your clients have moved conversions to GA4? And I get Google's point on it, but to go around your client, who Andrew's maximizing his time to maximize the revenue, he switches to GA4 here in February, whatever that takes is not maximizing his revenue. Well, we're putting the customer first. Yeah. yeah. Let's make sure we're putting the customer first I'm here. Sure How Andrew is. dare you? How dare you? Also, Ginny, Ginny Marvin replied to this and said, you know, hi, Andrew. Thank you for bringing this to our attention. I'm so sorry this happened. She acknowledges that this is not appropriate. And I understand this is, isn't an isolated incident and we'll follow up with the team to address Maybe. it. Maybe. If we're being dropped and not CC'd, it may not be. You know I what? believe Ginny it, believes that, but it's yeah. probably not an isolated incident. <sighs> There's only one way to fix this, and you can't outsource things, and then mm -hmm. you have to make a rule that if there's an MCC, you can't talk to any email that doesn't go to the MCC included, mm -hmm. that person gets fired. Yeah. That's what it has to be. It's actually easy. That just two things. No tele teleperformance, <laughs> and then no, no emailing outside the MCC. And last up in paid news, another Anthony Higman tweet. He noticed that the budget section in his local service ads disappeared on Monday around 3.30 or that's at least when he tweeted about it. Um, and then he later updated everyone and said that the budget section was back around 6.30 that day. So a little spooky. A little early for Halloween, but I dig it. That's everything in paid. What's happening in organic? We have a new Google products reviews update the february 2023 product reviews update first off love the name i know it's really creative rolls off the tongue this one and this is aiming to promote review content that is above and beyond the templated information you see on the web like most of the pro updates are and google is not directly punishing sites more rewarding those good sites that do not have thin content and summarizing products, but doing full on reviews. If you don't know how to do a full on review, you shouldn't have a review site. It's freaking easy. You buy the product, you open it up, you give your honest assessment, you take a lot of pictures, you take a video, you compare it against a similar product and you do everything out of your own head. It's not that hard. It's really not that hard. I don't understand why we're still talking about this stuff. Um, all right, side note, do you think this episode is going to be dinged by my very unoriginal Jurassic World Dominion review you know, to start off? That was that was unoriginal? Did yeah, you pull that from somewhere? Chat GPT. Mm. You're kidding. No, 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 no. Because no, 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 that felt more no. Greg Finn than anything. Yeah. Yes, and if you want to know more about how product review updates have hit in the past, we've got a fantastic episode with Glenn Gabe three episodes back where we went through every one of the updates from 2022 and how it hit and impacted many sites. All right, next up for all you data nerds, we've got something that will give you a reason for a big cheery. <laughs> Google is rolling out a feature over the next week that will allow you to automate a daily bulk export of your search console performance data to big query. We got the joke. <laughs> this will allow you to run complex queries over your data and get it to an external uh, storage service. So pretty awesome that you're going to be able to pull more of that out. Still would be nice if things were not uh, filtered and limited in there. All right, next up from Barry Schwartz over at Search Engine Roundtable. Google Business Profile Profile Strength widget is now live and many local SEOs are not happy. There is now a widget that you can see and the example he's got says looks good and it can show you what you can still do to your Google business profile. Um, I like to think of this as like an optimization score for Google business profiles. So uh, Gil Gildner, SEO is becoming more like PPC <gasps> and I hate it. <laughs> All right, next up, BNPL star Klarna is K-I-F-R. What? Buy now, pay later star Klarna is killing it for real. They have 34 million users in the U.S. Are we supposed to laugh? Yeah. I don't understand. And they said, we wanted to make sure consumers would be able to use Klarna everywhere. We created a browser that allows you to go to any website like Amazon, and you have a Klarna button at the bottom, so you can suddenly use Klarna in any website. So if you're a retailer, 
You may want to work in Klarna more. They're doing $6 billion worth of volume through this, which is pretty crazy. So it's sort of like we talked about with Shop Pay and Shopify, mm -hmm. being able to go to different merchants. If you make it easier for Klarna, it might be worth a test for you, $6 billion worth of volume in the U.S. All right. Consumption of linear TV is hitting historic lows as streaming gains continue. Apparently, less than half of U.S. households watch linear TV every day in, in quarter, second quarter 2022 with an average daily reach in third quarter 22 at the lowest it's been in the past seven quarters. So I think that spells good news for anybody that's at a digital agency here. Microsoft is increasing the price of using the Bing search APIs by 10x the current cost. Grant Cardone did there, and it is effective May 1st, 2023. I think I need to expunge and disavow my Grant Cardone reference after what came out this week. They say that includes using the API for Bing image search, news search, video search, visual search, web search, entity search, and more. The prices were $1 per transaction, and they went up to $10 per 1,000 transactions. So 10x the price, um, and if you're using that, you're going to pay more. Sorry. All right, in our chatter GPT section, Bing came out with a look at the proprietary technology. So we got another name. Sydney is the name of chat GPT, the chat box within the new Bing, within Edge. And they now have proprietary technology called Prometheus, which is a first of its kind AI model that combines a fresh and comprehensive Bing index rankings and answer results with creative reasoning capabilities of opening AI, open AI's most advanced GPT models. They talk about how their search queries, their chat queries, and how they try to like classify them together. It's actually really cool, and kudos to Bing for putting that out there. If you want to see more Bing AI chat in the Edge sidebar, Glenn Gabe has you covered over G Squared Interactive, gsqi.com, and he takes a look at all the different examples. Some issues where they're kind of saying that somebody at The Atlantic wrote Barry Schwartz's article, and for Team Barry, as you know. So there was a couple issues in there, but as Glenn does, he breaks it down better than anybody else out there in the world. All right, there's also positive and negative feedback that Microsoft has gotten over their new search. The good is that most searchers seem happy with the new results. Microsoft said 71% of searches graded the results a thumbs up in the search interface. So pretty cool there. Um, on the flip side, the chairperson of Alphabet, John Hennessy, said that Bard wasn't, quote, really ready, end quote, for use in a product. He said, Google was slow to introduce Bard because it was still giving the wrong answers. Hmm. In other news, no <laughs> shit. <laughs> All right. sharks doing? <laughs> okay, and just some other final marketing data here. Marketers are showing limited optimism about the year ahead with three in 10 of those surveyed by advertiser perceptions expecting bigger budgets than 2022. So only 30% think their budgets are going to increase. However, when it comes to marketingcharts.com, cease and desist, they say that content marketing, so this is a different survey, said that 58% of marketers expect to see their content budgets increase in 2023. And 6 and 10, uh, people are going to create more content. So who knows what it is, but more people are investing in content and things that might stick around longer. That's it in organic. What's happening in social button? Mr. Elon Musk tweeted, prepare to be disappointed at first when our algorithm is made open source next week, but it will improve rapidly. And this he said in response to a comment from Derek Smart at DSmart on Twitter to one of Elon's earlier tweets. Elon tweeted, Say what you want about me, but I acquired the world's largest nonprofit for $44 billion, <laughs> LOL. I appreciate the use of LOL versus an emoji. Derek then said, right, now open source it, then we will be truly impressed. <laughs> and clearly, Elon doesn't think we will be, but it's going to improve. Charts are going up. We'll see what the chart expert says. I don't even want to touch it. Move over MySpace because, new phrase in town, move over Neil Mohan since he's hot topic. Pinterest sees your 61 seconds and raises you five minute idea pins. Formerly limited, limited to just one minute idea pin videos can now be up to five minutes in duration, which honestly, all kidding aside, I think makes sense 
These really lend themselves nicely to explainers and how-to types of content that you can't necessarily jam into a minute, even if you have the power to add an extra second. If more time is needed, it's nice that it's an option, but I would say, as I do with character limits, that you should not just fill space because you have it. Get in, get out, and be great. But I think this is nice. If you're using idea pins, you have a little bit more, well, a lot more. You have 5x uh, the time to do what you need to do. It's rolling out to all users. Very cool. Speaking of longer form, quick social round this week. Last up here in social, TikTok has a new monetization tool for creators. It's got a really cute name too from Search Engine Journal. The TikTok Creativity Program Beta is a program designed to help creators monetize their content and unlock more opportunities. Once you are invited, creators must create and publish high quality original content longer than one minute in order to start earning. There's some other requirements here too, obviously. For now, it's invite only, but it will be coming to all eligible creators soon. And it is currently only available in the US, France, and Brazil, but that again is just for now. They said they're gonna be rolling this out to more regions um, coming soon. Benefits of this program include a dashboard with earning insights and performance metrics, which is always nice. You wanna see how things are doing. And somehow maybe more money. The aim of this program is to provide higher revenue potential keyword potential to creators and unlock more real world opportunities which is different from the creator fund which is straight up just paying you based on views and engagement i'm not sure how exactly this will equate to more money and bigger opportunities they didn't really give a lot of detail there but as this rolls out maybe we'll learn more i just like that tiktok has given people options i guess but they got to come up with a better name the creativity program and the creator fund like (laughs) real creative (laughs) And that brings us to our real life segment, straight out of our accounts and into your ear holes. It's time for Working Hard or Hardly Working, where we talk about what's going on in our IRL work, good, bad, or otherwise. This week, Working Hard or Hardly Working, for me, it's the integration that you can have with Google Drive and Slack. Um, So I'm working in a lot of documents with clients and also people on our team. And it's really hard to keep track of all the comments and replies and assigned twos. And I hate getting those emails. It like overloads my inbox all the time when somebody makes one comment. Mm -hmm. So um, I recently connected Google Drive and Slack and now they just give me nice messages. That is nice. You know what else is nice? talking to people. I feel like I say this all the time and I find different ways that communication works hard, but I have another example. So We have been super limited by Facebook ads or meta ads and their stupid limits on how many ads you can have because we've had to turn things Mm -hmm. off and grow campaigns and delete things. And when you delete things, summary metrics obviously change and we've had to like save those manually and add them in when we're reporting. And in just talking to our data team here this week, we found a solution for getting that data from deleted campaigns automatically. So it just helps to talk to people. If you're having a problem, just say it out loud. And I feel like somebody might have a solution or tweet it or whatever you got to do. Talk to your community. It's great. Greg? And I think I knew this, but I finally ran into it for once in the wild. But you can only have 100 Pmax campaigns in an account. <clears throat> and it sounds ridiculous, but mm-hmm. I've got something where let's say you're selling uh, bathroom, like janitorial supply, right? And you've got something where you've got toilet paper dispensers, you've got soap dispensers, you've got hand dryers, you've got feminine sanitary napkin dispensers, oh. things like that. <laughs> You end up, if you're trying to push one thing specifically, you have to have a lot of different campaigns out there. And I brushed up against it. You can delete old pause campaigns to get that number back down. But we've got a huge catalog for one client, and I'm going to have to set up new accounts. It's ridiculous. And I'm I'm not using Pmax for the whole part. I'm using Smart Shopping, and I'm wrapping off hours for this specific client with Pmax. So... We have more on Pmax coming in the next episode, a special episode coming next month, this month. With your affinity for bathroom humor, I can't believe you didn't make like a Pmax joke. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> no, it wasn't. And now for this week's Cool Tool. As a reminder, our Cool Tool segment is not an official endorsement or paid mention. We're simply sharing something we found in our travels that may be of use to our listeners. And is really, really cool. This week's cool tool is a super fab tab. 
in a Google Sheet. The PPC chat placement exclusion list Google Sheet to be exact. And from the reigning Greg of the year, PPC Greg. Mm. He tweeted, I added a tab here for all of the audience network places we've shown on to date. Feel free to exclude some slash all in an attempt to keep your ads from showing on the man, the Microsoft audience network. That is super handy. Huge time saver. Check out that tab. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We will have the links that you need to the tweet, to the sheet. It's not going to rhyme in there. Pretty neat. <laughs> Can't be beat. Okay, we'll have it in our newsletter as well as on Discord, so pick your poison and check it out. Now it's time for our must-read marketing article of the week. An article so advanced, so in-depth, so detailed, that we simply cannot cover it in its entirety on today's show. This week's must-read marketing article of the week comes from the one, the only, the SEO down under, Brody Clark, and he has an article called Google Image Thumbnails for Organic Results. What are they, how they work, and will SEO help? That might be the most SEO title that I've ever heard, but the content is great. It talks about the history of image thumbnails in Google search, the different types of image thumbnails, qualifying them, ranking issues, what his research shows, key takeaways, and a whole bunch of FAQs. So we appreciate that. You want to check it out, BrodyClark.com. Thank you, Brody. And remember... If you want all the stories from this week's show, head on over to marketingoclock.com forward slash newsletter, or you can get all the stories in our Discord, totally free channel in community, community community.marketingclock.com. And now on to our playlist of curated songs to work to, and you can head over to playlist.marketingoclock.com to see all of the new songs. What is going on our playlist this week, Greg? Jess, this month has been about you. Have I missed yet? You have not. Okay. So you know how life, a lot of times, you just don't really feel alive. You're just kind of going through it, and you get a little glimpse, right? Mm -hmm. A little glimpse of it? Yeah. Red Hot Chili Peppers. Ooh. Black Summer. There's a guitar riff. I don't know that one. You will feel alive. I hope so. And my song this week is a local Buffalo song by johnny and the man kids called poetry in motion my song is just my week panic by the smiths <laughs> all right that does it for today's show it is now officially not marketing o'clock but we miss you already can't wait to see you next week except you won't be here nicole <laughs> but thank you <laughs> bye thanks for listening to marketing o'clock if you're looking for more information on today's topic, head over to marketingoclock.com slash newsletter to receive every single article we covered. We share the news as it breaks in our Discord community. Head over to community.marketingoclock.com to join. Welcome to this week's Shooting the Hack, where after each episode, we don't talk about marketing anymore. We just shoot the hack and get the intro a little bit wrong. Hey, you know what? <laughs> I'm doing my best here today. All right. So... Shop's out. I'm really sorry. But good news. Tables, Nicole, Jess, this might be a chance for your first win because we are playing Travel Buddies. Oh, Where no. you get a choice of two different people. There's a right answer it's and a wrong answer. Favorite. You are traveling <laughs> the world. This is a global excursion you're going on. And you get to choose one person. Right answer. I have it clearly outlined in front of me. It doesn't. You make that choice and I will tell you if you're right or wrong. And you're not going to be partaking in these activities with these people. You just have to make that choice, all right? Tell us the rules again. Maybe no. we'll get it this time. All right. This is jelly base. <laughs> I, know, I know how to make you laugh. Like you waited until I, I took a sip. All right. Somebody whose favorite jelly is grape jelly <laughs> or somebody whose favorite jelly is orange marmalade. <clears throat> orange marmalade or grape jelly? You just don't care about strawberry people. You have two people. You choose which travel buddy you're going with. Grape jelly. Orange marmalade's a psycho. Yeah, I feel like orange is a very polarizing flavor. And also, it's not as readily available as grape. Grape is very ubiquitous of a flavor. Big word. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tables, any other commentary? I'm going to go with orange marmalade. <gasps> you can't. Well, you got to pick. No, you got two to, to one. Democracy. So we have to align. Wow, we have to align. I forgot. Mm -hmm. So we never win, though. 
So, we don't win no matter how aligned we are. You need to work are. together We're for once. We're always misaligned with the game maker. I will, I will go grape, but I will also say that we... <laughs> We always pick the obvious answer that we want, and we we're always don't. wrong. So he maybe just always no picks whatever we don't we pick. pick. It, There's an answer. I have it written down. Okay. What do you what, final answer? The answer grape. is grape. We'll go with grape. This was maybe the most <laughs> easiest question of the day you have, and you got it wrong. There are way better jellies than grape. If you and are, orange marmalade is not one, and it doesn't matter because jelly listen, is not on the menu. You're on going this trip. for a dark red, a dark purple jelly. You should be going mixed berry. You should be going strawberry. You should be going raspberry. Anybody that likes grape jelly, there's a reason you go to a restaurant, a diner, and all you get is grape jelly because nobody wants it because it sucks. Orange marmalade, at least you're a little bit eccentric. You're a little bit out there. You should go the right answer, orange what? marmalade. Grape is by far the worst of the dark red purple jellies. And how does this translate to travel, Greg? Because you are picking somebody that likes the worst possible. They have bad taste. I feel like that's an opinion. No, it is not, not an fact. opinion. It's a fact. I have it written down. Okay, next up. You are going to be so traveling angry. either with somebody whose favorite movie character is Stanley Goodspeed from The Rock, a.k.a. Godspeed. It's fine. Or somebody's whose favorite movie character is Cameron Poe from Con Air. I have no clue who both of these people are. They're the, they're the same movie, but they're completely different characters, and that's why this is clever. But the same actor. Yes, but that doesn't matter. Nick Cage. The answer, just so everyone knows, so you've got Stanley Goodspeed, who it ends up fine, but he's kind of a coward, and somehow he got the prom queen, or I think Sean Connery uses like way stronger words than that. But Cameron Poe is very resourceful, and he got thrown in jail – he shouldn't have. He spent his life there, not his whole life, but like he had a child when he wasn't around and he's just trying to get home. Like you yeah. want that guy who's trying to get home to his family. He will do anything to survive this trip with you mm -hmm. and it will be fun. And John Malkovich may get crushed, whatever that guy's real name is, but it's going to be Cyrus good. the Virus. Cyrus the Virus. What's the actor's name? John Malkovich, yeah. right? Yeah. I'd go with the latter then. Thank you. I, I'll take Jess's word So your for it. final answer is Cameron Poe from Con Air. I mean, tables didn't weigh in, but it's two I'm against go one that. again. Yeah. You made a great argument. But the only <laughs> thing you forgot about is this person, Cameron Poe, went to jail for beating the crap out of somebody. That insulted I his know, wife. I know, but this person is going to have that in the back of their mind. You're going to be traveling around, and any chance he's going to try to mimic his favorite character when he thinks he's right, he's going to do some vigilante justice, and you're going to jail too. That's why you need the nerd, Stanley Goodspeed, a.k.a. Godspeed, from The Rock. But if you end up in a foreign jail, you want the guy that can get you out. And as somebody with hidden anger yeah, issues yeah. as well, I appreciate you should it, watch it. But what's better is not going to jail, okay? <laughs> Next up, flavor of dum-dum. Somebody's favorite flavor is root beer dum-dum. It's a lollipop here in the U.S. Or mystery dum-dum. That's not a flavor. It's a flavor mystery. of dum-dum. It it's a wrapper Rap okay. of dum-dum. So -dum. Somebody that goes for the mystery or somebody that goes for the root beer. I've been swaying the vote here. I'll shut up and let these two. I'm, I'm going to say mystery because this person is spontaneous. They're okay with the unknown and they're a little adventurous. I agree. Tables? I'm going to go with the mystery person. Okay. okay Just me... so everyone's aware, we are root beer and we know what he's going to say. No, we don't. <laughs> let me look it up quick. Mm -hmm. Let me find out what the answer was. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you were really, really close this time. <laughs> so the problem is mystery is always the same junk. It's the very end, and it gets combined together, and it tastes like a whole bunch of garbage. And what you really want is the best flavor out there. It's somebody that's going to do the research, that knows what they're looking for, and gets you the best experience on your trip, not some bargain basement garbage leftover sucker. You have strong feelings on lollipops for a grown man. <laughs> and I haven't had a lollipop in six years. Okay. somebody, we, were, we got a point? <clears throat> no, you missed yeah, that. All right. Somebody whose favorite song is Butterfly by Crazy Town. I mean. Or somebody whose favorite song is Ba With The Ba by Kid Rock. <sighs> oh, you man. do this on purpose to me. <laughs> 
<laughs> Once again, I will abstain from the vote. Let the kids tables. Why don't you start I, this I, time? I'm going to go ba with the ba because anybody who likes crazy town is insane. Butterfly, butterfly is like the greatest. And there's a lollipop no, full creep, circle the, the on the sing, album cover. The lead singer creeps me out. I'd rather be hanging out with somebody getting down Kid Rock. He's like the lead singer creeps me out. <laughs> AKA, it's Kid Rock on Kid the Rock other side. Doesn't creep he doesn't creep me out as much as that guy. Do you know these hits? I probably would if I heard, but I'm going to trust right. the experts and here. And Jess, what do you say? I think Cowboy is a better song than no, Ball with the Ball. It's choice. But it's Kid Rock, so I'll sway that way. I'll go with Tables in the Coal. That's okay. what I have to. Let me look up the phone. answer here. I can't wait to see how you butcher this. Unfortunately, you're wrong. Again, the correct answer is butter town, Butterfly. But butter butter town. Butter town. <laughs> That's what we need here. It's a loving song. He's talking about spreading the love. It's got like a good beat to it. It's a very Ball nice song. It's too aggressive. It would be so aggressive out there. I will say... I love it when they're like, all oh, you bastards at the <laughs> And heroes at the methadone clinic. <laughs> they're really close, but like, you're just going to get stopped. You're going to get frisked. You just don't mm. want that. All right. And we'll end on that, you know? So I hope all you bastards at the IRS <laughs> like this episode. You actually, let me add up how many wins you had or how many losses you had. You're 0 for 4. But this was maybe your best effort yet. I can't. I can't. <laughs> it is now officially not shooting the heck we don't do that, right? <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to see you next week.